Hi folks, I'm Mark Carey. Today I want to talk with you about how to set up your Roadcaster Pro to work in Adobe Audition by using the multi-track recording settings in the Roadcaster Pro with the multi-track recording functions of Adobe Audition. None of what I'm telling you is new. If you look at one of my prior videos, a link to which is up here, you'll see that there is a great place for you to find the resources you need in order to integrate your Roadcaster Pro with Adobe Audition. You can read all of that, but sometimes it's a little bit difficult to see it in practice. So today I'm gonna to show you how to use Roadcaster Pro multi-track recording function with Adobe Audition as you record your audio in Adobe Audition. Now, I will tell you that today I'm recording in vMix. So the audio is being recorded into vMix. I'm not going to be able to record into Adobe Audition while I'm recording into vMix for the entire program. And we'll talk a little bit about that later and why we don't want to do it that way. In addition to recording directly into Adobe Audition, you can record into the SD card on your Rodecaster Pro. And when you do, you will end up with individual tracks. Now today, the only track I'm recording is my microphone, which is plugged into the number one microphone input on the Rodecaster Pro. So you would think that if Rodecaster Pro outputs what I'm recording through the USB cord, it's going to output a mix a stereo mix, and that's not necessarily true. You have that option, but you can choose to output multiple tracks. Those multiple tracks are usable in Adobe Audition if you set it upright. Now today, since I'm only recording my microphone, I don't really need to record into Adobe Audition. So what I'm gonna demonstrate for you is not what I'm doing today, but this is the way you would wanna record if you're bringing in a caller, if you're mixing in music, if you're playing the audio behind a video, you would wanna bring that into your Rodecaster and then output it on separate tracks so that you could control the amplitude or volume, you could control the gain, you could control effects, you could eliminate hissing, you could create silence, you could edit out pops and clicks and mouth noises, and perhaps even your guest hits their microphone during the recording in some fashion, or they sit down their coffee cup hard. Anything else you might want to edit out might be behind your own voice. So while I'm talking, if I had a guest on here talking at the same time and the guest made a noise, it might be behind my voice. Very difficult to edit that out if it was all on a stereo track or on a mono track. But in multi-track recording, you can edit each individual track. You can take that little piece of noise out on the track where it was created. If by some chance you're recording and you're listening to your guest talk, and while your guest is talking, you need to clear your throat and you reach over and you fail to hit the mute button and you go, <clears throat> it ends up in the mix if it's a stereo mix or it could end up on your own track in Adobe Audition, you could go back in post-production and just edit that little noise out and not affect the whole track. So a lot of advantages to using multi-track recording if you're using a DAW with multi-track capabilities like Adobe Audition. So let's talk about it. Let me demonstrate for you how you set up Adobe Audition to accept the multi-tracks being recorded out of your Rodecaster Pro. So I am recording this audio into my Rodecaster on the SD card. I would show you how to do that by recording directly into Adobe Audition, but I don't understand enough about this, quite frankly, to do that at this point and for this reason. I have established an Adobe Audition multi-track recording session. As you can see, my audio from my microphone is showing up at this place on the multi-track session in Adobe Audition. However, to record here, I would not be able to demonstrate some of the things that I want to show you. Why am I recording onto the SD card? Answer is pretty simple. If I try to record into vMix, I have to be set up with a different input. If I try to record into Adobe Audition, I have to be able to use the SEO for all driver. And we talked about that in another episode that's linked right up here as well. And now that I'm recording into the Rodecaster Pro, I can go to the SD card 
and then sync up the audio later, which I'm going to show you a little tip and a trick a little later in this video. But first, let's talk about setting up your Adobe Audition multi-track. You need to go in and open up a multi-track session. You can't just click the multi-track button up here. That won't work. You have to go in and open a new multi-track session. When you do, you're going to find that you'll have a few tracks already established. You need to create a total of nine tracks, at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tracks is what I created. The first track, you're going to want to go into this place on the screen, and you're going to want to designate this as the input being Rodecaster Pro Stereo. Now, that will be a track that's coming out of your Rodecaster Pro. It's the Stereo Mix. The next one that you want to choose for your input is the Multi-Channel Mono Track Multi-Channel 3. Why do we say multi-channel three? My microphone is plugged into microphone channel one. Again, we showed you that chart. I'll demonstrate it again for you. The buttons and the numbering on the Rodecaster do not correspond with the channel numbers that are coming out. So actually, the sound coming out of microphone channel one, as it looks on the front of your Rodecaster, is actually O5M, which is Pro Multi-Channel 3. As you move down the list and you find the other channels, you want to go in and create a mono channel, and it would be multi-channel four. That is the next microphone channel. Then it's multi-channel five, which is the next microphone channel. Then you have a mono channel, multi-channel six, which is the microphone channel four. The next channel is the USB channel. I set this up as a stereo channel. There's a reason for that. I'm bringing in both sides. You can actually split that channel and take the left and the right and create individual tracks in your multi-track session. If you created a mono channel, they would be seven and eight. But I chose a stereo channel, and that is the multi-channel seven stereo. Then you've got the Bluetooth channel. As you move on down the list, then you have the sound pads, and then you have your master. I also have a TRRS set up, and I have that set up as a stereo channel as well. So once you set up your channels, you can come back in and click on the name and name the channels so you won't forget what they are. Now, in order to record into Adobe Audition, you first have to tick this little R button. If the R button's off, you'll see I don't have any sound showing up in my meter. That's a record button that, that turns the channel on, allows you to record directly out of the Rodecaster Pro on the appropriate channel onto the appropriate track. So you want to go down and tick all of those on, any of those that you're going to be recording on. As you can see, the stereo mix coming out of the USB from the Rodecaster Pro now has my audio channel. But if I go down and turn on the second mic channel, there's nothing there because there's no microphone plugged in. The audio is all the way down. If I push the slider all the way up, it doesn't make any difference. There's nothing coming in. So I can leave that off. When I take the Rodecaster Pro and plug it in and use the ACO for all driver and designate that appropriately, as we demonstrated in another video, then you will be ready to record the individual channels here in Adobe Audition. If you are recording your microphone on your microphone channel and you're recording a caller on another channel, you can edit each channel independently. Perhaps the gain is too high on one channel. Perhaps it's a little too low. Maybe you need a noise gate. Maybe you need to go up and in your effects on Adobe Audition, maybe you need to go in and do some sort of noise reduction, capture a noise print, take out some of the background noise on a call, maybe even on yours, a little hiss, a little noise, a little background noise. You can edit each channel individually. You can add reverb, you can add depth, you can change uh, the EQ on any channel individually. But here comes the real trick. Now you've recorded into Adobe Audition multi-channel. You've edited each channel the way you like. The sound as you play it sounds great. Now you want to export that 
to a stereo or to a mono file, and you want to put that in with your video. How do you sync up the lips, the noise, the sounds, the video with the audio behind it? How do you sync that up in a video so that it matches? You're recording in one place. You're putting that into Adobe Premiere or whatever your editing software is. You're taking the video out of vMix. How do you line up the audio and video? You could sit there and scrub back and forth and try and match it, or you could do what you've seen so many times before. Have you ever seen one of these before? How about in all the movies where the director's sitting in a director's chair with a megaphone and somebody runs up in front of the actress or the actor and does this and they yell, take, scene, whatever, and they put it up in front of them and they go, This is called a clap board or a striker board or a studio board or a scene board or a snap board. Goes by a lot of names. $12 on Amazon. Why did they do that? Most movies, believe it or not, are filmed without sound. Now, that doesn't mean they're not filming the audio and the video at the same time. They are. But there's a lot of overdubbing. They go back and repeat lines. They improve the audio quality. There's audio editing that goes on after the scene is shot. Sometimes the audio captured during the shooting of the video isn't of the same quality. What do they do to fix that problem? They have to go back in from all the little snippets of audio and line it up with the video. This has a visual, when this this striker hits here, it's visually available to you in the video, and the sound shows up in your audio track. You can pick that little audio peak that you see in your audio track and line it up exactly with the visual of when the clapper comes down on the board. For $12, at the beginning of this audio recording, which is on a completely different device than the video is being recorded. I made that noise. I did it again to demonstrate to you. So I have a couple of places on this audio track where I can go in and line the audio and the video up and bring them into sync. If you're using vMix, you also have the option in the establishment of your recording program to put in a delay. Audio arrives sooner to your recording device than the video does because the video is a larger file. So the audio is always just a little bit ahead of the video unless they're both coming in through a camera. If your audio and video are coming in through a camera, they should arrive at about the same time. If your audio is coming in from your roadcaster or your audio is coming in from a multi-track mix down in Audition, and you're trying to line it up in a video with the video track, which was recorded on a separate camera, it can be absolutely mind-boggling to try to do that, particularly if you have multiple cuts, if you have recorded a piece and then recorded another piece. And that's why there are these little places to write on the board. I recorded all of this in one long piece. I'll go back and cut it later. I'll cut it. Once I line it up, I'll cut the audio and video together in Premiere Pro and close the gap with a ripple delete. But if I was going to record individual scenes and I was going to have to line up audio and video over and over and over again in individual recordings, I could write which scene, which take, what role of film it was on, anything else that I needed to put on here to remind me which one of the scenes it goes to. So when setting up your Rodecaster Pro to work with a video recording, remember you can record into the SD card, which is a great backup. You can record right into Adobe Audition. Don't forget beforehand, everything I'm telling you, you can find at Rode.com. Click the link for updating firmware and then go to the knowledge base. All of this information is there. Many people don't go to find it. Many people don't know where to go to find it. Even by directing you there, I'll be giving you better information that you got here, but you've got a little bit of a taste of how you can use your Rodecaster Pro 
with Adobe Audition how you could take the sound file and put it on a video file, just like the pros in Hollywood do. And that's a wrap.